In this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the engine removal of our charioteer tank. No, <laughs> everything is frozen solid today. It's like minus four. <laughs> Mind you, it makes it better for gas acting. We start heating everything up, try and get everything moving. It's going to be a bit of a learning curve day today. One of the first things we're going to find. For these engine decks, you've got like a square key, like a tap type thing. So I've got to try and find something for that. Or almost certainly have to make, make a tool for it, I think it's going to be the key. But uh, yeah, lots of gas acting today. I'll try and figure out how much is there, what we haven't got, what we have got. And uh, yeah. Should be an interesting day. For this section, screwed in. Have to go through the screw. Very carefully. This one's got a pocket, that's a hinge on. Here, that's a hinge. We've got to make, to make up another little tool, you know, on the socket. Warm it up properly, just tick it. The first job the lads need to do when starting any new restoration is to look it over and gain access to the inside of the vehicle. The hatches need opening so they can get into the driver's area, in the turret and inside of the tank in general. Then it's the removal of the engine decks to see what lies inside. The charioteer's original Cromwell hull is from 1944 and has a more complicated deck array, which is a mixture of bolted down plate armor and hinged access panels. Because of this, all of the bolts and fixtures most of which hasn't seen movement in what we estimate to be over 20 years, have all seized and are in need of some assistance in moving again. We use an oxygen fuel torch, or a gas axe, to apply high temperature directly to the seized bolt. This causes the metal to expand and contract through the different heat cycles, causing the rust or corrosion bonds holding it in place to break and allow the bolt to be removed.
They used flat-headed screwing bolts rather than traditional hex head bolts because they're flush with the armor. No raised parts that could cause a stray bullet or round to become a ricochet hazard. Removing every bolt and easing every hinge in this way has been very time consuming. What nuts and bolts could be removed by traditional means were. Others were heated up and drifted out. Replacing nuts and bolts is one of the easier tasks to do on a restoration. Once the top armor decking was removed, it revealed a crossbeam structure holding them in place, which, if the lads wanted to remove the engine, needed to be removed as well. With the engine bay in full view, the lads can see what condition the engine's in and if there may be other issues moving forward. So, as you can see, looks a lot different to when we uh, first got it. All the engine decks are removed. They were an absolute pig. Took two days just to get them off with a lot of heating and hammering and swearing. Um, then down here to the, uh, the clutch, we had to get some, a lot of the pipes off there and the bolts at the bottom were an absolute pig as well. Um, and in fact, You'll see in the video, um, we had to rock it backwards and forwards very gently just to try and get everything to move. We were a bit worried that there might be, uh, the engine might be completely seized. Um, but we, the only way to do it was to move it a bit because we could not get at those bolts underneath. Anyway, we rocked it and rocked it and it's all moved. So hopefully the engine's still good, but at least we can get the bolts out so we can uh, um, get the engine out. So that's all been removed. Uh, most of the pipe work underneath has been removed. The fan belts have been removed. Um, we've got a little bit more work to do on the front of the engine uh, to get some bolts off under there, I do believe. Um, so we think one more day um, of work and then we should be pretty well close to do, a, to do a pack lift, if everything goes as planned, which obviously it never does. Um, even these, we've got to get these exhaust pipes off and they're absolutely solid, so I expect there's a couple of hours of just messing around there. But it just gives you an idea. Um, and also, we did find that the fuel tanks, one either side, both got fuel in still, so that's a good sign. It means the tanks are still um, still sound. We'll get them out, take them out, and um, see see exactly uh, what the condition is. But so far, that's a good sign. Oil in all the tanks where they're supposed to be oil, um, and the water was drained, so it means that uh, there's unlikely to be any cracks in the in the block because they had actually drained all the water out of them. So, touch wood, that'll all be good. Um, anyway, so that's that bit. You'll see in the videos, you'll see the work we, we actually did to, uh, to do it, and um, you'll realise exactly what a nightmare it was. No more water than bloody oil. First thing to come out, I think these, the two tanks are linked, so I think I'm pretty much draining both. Uh, but I took out 30 litres of water before any oil came out. It's had boring. To get the tank up and running again, removing the decks is just the first part of the process. The lads now need to prepare the engine to be removed. We do this by removing exhaust pipes, unbolting the engine mounts, and disconnecting the clutch and the gearbox. All required the same amount as effort as the engine decks did. Applying the heat, loosen and remove for every bolt. He's going. Three. Hey. 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 Oh. <laughs> Thank 
Goodness. Ah, that's why, it's on screw thread. <laughs> Only one more to do. Okay, so clutch is pulled away from here. The uh, pulleys there are starting to come through okay. I have to move that pipe. I'm not too worried about the metal pipe works, it's all being replaced. Okay, so I think we've got her strapped up reasonably well. We've actually put the straps around the frame and a ratchet strap around the clutch. So let's just try a gentle lift, Stu. I say that just moved. Okay, just hold it, hold it there. Let's move from there. In this case, it has the original Cromwell's Rolls-Royce Meteor engine. It weighs in at an impressive 835 kilograms and can produce up to 650 horsepower. Once the engine is out, the team can remove other parts from the engine bay, such as the gearbox itself, the radiator assembly, and the fuel tanks. There are other parts to think about within the engine bay. The air filters and pipes, fuel and water lines that run around the sides, all must be carefully capped off, checked for integrity, and changed accordingly whilst the engine is out. Now we've had a recap, you can see that the engine bay has been silvered and ready for a complete rebuild and fit of the new engine. Once this is done, we'll be able to move her again under her own power. Right, so just bolting in this piece here, um, it's basically a, a seat for the uh, radiator, one of the radiators, this is rubber. The radiator will sit in here, bolts up here, and then the fan cowling comes on, which bolts along here, here, and here. So it's basically support. This comes up to the, one of the cross members and locks everything in place. Pretty straightforward. If you've enjoyed what you've seen so far, please like and subscribe to the Armageddon channel. And absolutely, any questions you have, don't be uh, afraid to ask them. We'll do our best to answer them. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. <laughs>